I think what the observation you're making is a little dated. Um, we've, things have moved along. Uh, I can tell you that at Pacific, uh, I met with Martin Hamilton Smith, the minister from South Australia. We have a good relationship, and in fact, at that dis at that um, discussion and and at that meeting where we met, also with uh, um, other players from other states, uh, we resolved the, uh, to approach the the um, both sides of federal politics to suggest you know there should be something like a coag for in the defence field. Um, there should be a ministerial level meeting of uh, all states under the leadership of the federal um, players uh, on a regular basis. We do it with just about every other field of endeavour, but we don't have it at state level. Now we have, as I said earlier, every state has um, effectively modelled themselves on South Australia and established a, a minister or, or an office responsible for defence matters. They all have defence advocates. It makes a lot of sense to coordinate activity. And what we saw, um, Martin Hamilton Smith and myself, uh, saw an opportunity for the federal government to provide um, more guidance and leadership as to where states should focus their efforts. Instead of um, having a bit of a laissez-faire attitude to how defence uh, opportunities are, are provided to the states by throwing them out and essentially throwing the lollies on the table and having everyone scramble for them. Uh, it would not be that difficult, I believe, for uh, the federal government to have a, a, a respectful discussion with states, look at what each state and territory has with respect to natural competitive advantage, where they have the, the strength and knowledge and the capability already established and suggest areas they might focus their efforts on with respect to creating the sovereign defence capability rather than um, enabling this, uh, this waste of money, which as I understand it, we haven't engaged in it, but I understand there has been uh, significant um, amounts of money uh, bid essentially by individual states in competition for some of the big contracts uh, to entice them to their home state as, a, as an objective. Um, and that's wasteful because any money that's spent in that sort of activity will be ultimately recouped uh, against the taxpayer in, in the form of the contract. So it doesn't achieve anything and it just delays the process and it probably um, undermines everything. So. I think, and, and as I said, we had a good conversation in, um, at Pacific and I think that there's an opportunity there for an engagement not just with South Australia but with, with any other state and territory where it's appropriate, where we might share capabilities and rather than um, be engaged in a, in a counterproductive uh, competitive process, we might be engaged in a collaborative process. I'm supportive of a discussion that in, involves Western Australia in the national defence debate. So I'm... I'm I welcome it and I'm very supportive of us having a Western Australian view of the defence discussion and that's something that has lacked. Uh, it's no criticism of anyone in particular. I think it's just a, a natural inclination at state level to assume that defence matters are federal, which is reasonable, but uh, when it comes to um, capability, when it comes to infrastructure, when it comes to uh, even operations that in impact on the state, we should have a, at least a seat at the table for the discussion. And that's why I welcome any, any paper that, uh, that reflects a Western Australian uh, view of the world and uh, educates and contributes to the education of those on the East Coast. And it's not a, uh, you know, I always have a, a bit of a, a jab at them, but uh, I do think um, we get forgotten often over here and uh, so that's why it's good that there are more voices out there um, urging people to take an, an Indian Ocean view of the world. One of the most exciting things has been the recent announcement about the offshore patrol vessel um, awarding of the, of the tender. Uh, that represents a great opportunity for Western Australia because uh, the design lesson um, uh, being chosen means that uh, Peter Lurson, the, the head of uh, that, that German company, has made a commitment already to establishing a shipbuilding hub in Western Australia to market his other designs to Asia. Now that's, uh, that's above and beyond the offshore patrol vessel. So the offshore patrol vessel um, uh, announcement means that there's an opportunity for the federal government to get on and start spending money on infrastructure to enable that, that, uh, pro that uh, project to be delivered. That has to happen in advance of the hulls coming to WA to be constructed. They have to get the work done to build infrastructure necessary 
for the project, so that's good. There's another opportunity now, and we, we will pursue that with, um, with CIVMEC and with, uh, with Lurson to talk about that commitment to a hub for marketing potentially other designs of ships into Asia. Beyond that, uh, I'm very focused on uh, trying to get a, a real time frame, a real program for moving the shift of the full cycle docking of the Collins class to Western Australia. That has to happen uh, as a part of the expansion of shipbuilding and submarine building uh, activities in South Australia. They have to move the, off the uh, full cycle docking of Collins class to WA. That's 500 jobs, but they're 500 skilled jobs. The 500 people in South Australia will be remaining in South Australia as part of the workforce for their ship construction. So that's no loss to South Australia, but we have to grow the skill set here to do a full cycle docking. That needs to commence now. Um, in my view. Beyond that, they have to build infrastructure to build to uh, conduct full cycle docking in Western Australia. It requires additional facilities which aren't there. That needs to happen now. Um, there needs to be investment by the federal government in that infrastructure. That creates jobs as well. So a lot of my focus right now is on creating jobs. I think there's a, a real opportunity for the federal government to look at Western Australia, recognise as they have that uh, the GST is broken and the distribution of GST is broken, so they need to, but they, they are saying they can't fix that um, in the near term, so what they need to do is balance the ledger a little, uh, by, when I say balance the ledger I mean by creating jobs in WA which are much needed, they need to invest in infrastructure. Um, they, it doesn't have to be defence money. They could be, def they could be spending money in Western Australia to create assets that are utilised by defence and the private sector. But uh, they're, they're, uh, that investment will be in the national interest. It's, it's justifiable, and it's very justifiable in terms of um, uh, convincing Western Australians that we're not being uh, dudded with respect to defence, um, with respect to uh, federal uh, investment. Clearly, um, there is a disproportionate share of GST distribution going to the East Coast, and uh, we're not gonna get it back in a hurry. So what they can do is spend some infrastructure money in WA, and I just think some of it will benefit defence. So we'll be arguing that case. Beyond that, um, the opportunity for us lies with the Indian Ocean Rim uh, and into Asia. We are the closest, we are uh, the, the most deeply engaged over decades we've been engaged in the commodity sector with trade and uh, right around the Indian Ocean Rim, Africa, the subcontinent and Asia. Um, it's our, ass, our gas, our oil, our, our um, iron ore, it's our uh, 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 grain predominantly that's going up to these nations that has established the relationship with Australia, we need to ensure that we leverage off that a lot more and we can do that in the defence sector so we'll be looking to do that wherever we can.